here with episode three of the schoolie maintenance and repair series. I did not have a chance to show you how to do this job because I've been fighting this all day and with the help of my buddy, Mike Munger, he came in today to work on his badass Dodge Challenger RT and he was nice enough to give me a hand doing this job. I tell you what, it was a pain in the ass. Um, what are we looking at? Six, seven hours. At least. At least. The problem was, is here's the old wastegate that I replaced with the other part. In order to remove it, I had to use a torch and heat all three of these bolt sections with a torch, which I didn't have at home, so I'm glad I brought it here to the shop. And then this pedestal, the turbo bolts right on top of this pedestal. This pedestal has the valve which operates the wastegate. The new pedestal has no valve and no wastegate. But I just wanted to show you that there are four bolts that hold the turbo on that go through this way. The problem we were having is there was enough slack that the turbo could move one way or the other just a little bit. And when you set it in there and you try to line the bolts up, when you try to line these bolts up into the engine, they wouldn't go because the turbo was being pressed up against the exhaust and cocking this one way or the other. So after trial and error, trial and error, and I think we had this turbo off, how many times did we have that turbo off? Eight, eight times we had it off. So that is why I did not give you a detailed video on the whole tear down because Dude, they'd have to censor the whole video because of the <laughs> F-bombs, I'm telling you. But let's take a look real quick. I can show you what I got. Let's go around to the other side. I got a mess going on. I've been here all day. And if you look down there right now, you can see that shiny new part right there. Yeah, that's the turbo pedestal. And it does not have a valve. And then there's the new wastegate and there's no wastegate on the new part. So horsepower bump, well, maybe not a lot, but it ought to uh, at least reduce the exhaust gas temperatures because there's no wastegate now interfering with the exhaust. Horsepower. So horsepower bump. And um, the next video, we're going to be doing the oil cooler. Um, I will, I'll explain it when we get to the video. Um, we're going to stay on this one right now. So this would be the exhaust back pressure valve delete. So this is the exhaust back pressure valve built into the pedestal. There's no need for this quarter plug because the new one doesn't have one. And with my computer, I told you guys earlier, I disabled this system anyway. But regardless, oil still flows. And I was leaking oil out of that, right there, just spewing all over inside the engine. So we now bypassed this and bypassed that with the new kit. I can show you the kit online real quick. Okay, guys, this is the pedestal delete kit that I got from my boss. It is sold through dieseltruckpartsdirect.com, and the price was $159. So there's the new pedestal, it comes with the new O-rings, the new seal, the new bolts. So I'm glad it came with all that. Those three little bolts that held that wastegate on were a pain. Even after using torches and heating it up, I could not get them out for the life of me. And I'm an experienced technician. So this particular job, I would not say the regular average home mechanic could do. Unless you have a good set of torches and lots of tools and maybe even some help, this was a terrible job. Absolutely horrible. It took way longer than I thought it would and it was bad. So if you did want to attempt this job, I'll give you a quick breakdown on what was involved. Um, this large tube right here had to come off. So there was a hose clamp there and another hose clamp right there at the turbo. Remove that. There's this saddle clamp right here. You gotta pop that open. And then back on the exhaust, you see that clamp right there. That's gotta come off. And then the turbo has two bolts. You can see one bolt 
two bolts and then two nuts. See if I can get you up in here. And just like I see the two nuts down there, so there's four bolts total. Two are bolts, two are nuts. I had to use a torch and heat those up also to remove them. They would not come out. So after those bolts are off, and after you get the clamp off and get the hoses out of your way, there's a Y pipe down here that's got to come off. And this Y pipe, you can see the clamp there, and there's two more on the other side. And that was that saddle clamp. So this whole Y piece has to come off. And that's where that gasket goes, that larger gasket I showed you in the picture of the parts list. And then down there is a bolt there for the pedestal, a bolt there for the pedestal, and there are two back here that I am not even going to try to show you because they are buried. And in order to change them, it was basically to pull them out by feel. It was terrible. We had to use a swivel socket with a swivel extension, and it was absolutely, absolutely terrible terrible job. So if you ever have an oil leak and you think it might be the rear main seal or something, what happens is this piece here can leak. And if it leaks oil into your valley, it'll pour out the back of the engine and it make it seem like you have a rear seal leak or something. But like I said, I don't recommend doing this as a regular home mechanic. You're probably gonna have to pay someone to do this job because it was brutal. So anyway, that's it for this episode of Maintenance and Repair. This is the exhaust back pressure valve delete kit. It is now installed, and I am going to move on to the next video and the next repair. Thanks for watching.